Good risings, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to One Worship, One Praise Discipleship Center, where we only teach and preach the Bible. Uh, this morning, we're going to have just a, a good time this morning. Uh, we're praying that everybody gets something out of the words this morning, and we're going to have scripture from Alea. Scripture and prayer from Alea in Armani. Princess Alea and Princess Armani. I'm coming from Israel 3 and 8. Go oh, now, girl. You got this. <laughs> the weeping for the people were shouting so loudly that the sound was heard from a great distance. Again. I'm coming from Ezra 3 and 8. Amen. Good job. Good job. Amen. Thank you, God, for just allowing these kids to be here with us this morning. Amen. Amen. And now we're going to have the mission statement from Princess Alea. I mean, Michaela. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> One worship, one praise stands for we have now worship, we have now praise. Started by God revealed to Messenger J and Queen Vassie. The two started this ministry to reach the ones that are from the same background and or the ones for the intellectual teaching. This ministry will help all level up to grow and go for, forward in the name of the Father in heaven. One worship, one praise is pronounced. One worship, one praise to symbolize that we all must be in one spirit to come together in one worship with one praise to our God. So all are welcome to join us in unity with oneness. In this ministry, we will address each other as king, queens, prince, princess, in honoring of the power and strength that lives within us. Amen. 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 With that being said again, good risings, kings, queens, princes, princesses. Hope you guys are having a blessed morning so far. And uh, I'm going to see if Minister Jay have anything for us this morning to say. No. Bro, before he comes, let me just say a quick little something. We are doing our Christmas uh, gift giveaway to where we are accepting a three dollar donation you can send that to our one worship one praise uh cash app or it's one one movement ent cash app and then uh we are also doing a coat hats and glove giveaway if you guys would like any of that just uh inbox us on here or yeah just inbox us or message us any kind of way uh, Minister J is coming up with anything he has to say. Hallelujah. That boy want to preach. He tried to take the mic. He said, give me that mic. Give me that mic. No. How's everybody doing this rising? Good risings, kings, queens, prince, princesses. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And I want to piggyback right what she was saying as far as the Coats, gloves, hats, we have those things that they are available. If you will need those, there are children's coats, gloves, hats, and scarves. And also, again, we are accepting donations to help the ones that are in need in the time of this season. This is a season that is rough right now because of the COVID-19. So we are accepting $3 donations to help out the community. Again, at One Worship, One Praise Discipleship Center, where we teach only the Bible, we do not utilize the funding that... Uh, uh, we receive for our home. We put it into the community. So it will be great if you guys will back a ministry that helps out the community and keeps everything for the community. But no, let's get let's go ahead and get started with our uh uh our song. Y'all know our theme song. 
We got to get it going. We're going to get it, get this energy rising up in here. Y'all ready? Yeah. Yeah, well, I got to get him here. He, you know, he know where he go. You got to you gotta get in your spot every Sunday, don't you, boy? He said, I got to praise God. Y'all ready? Yeah. God is good. You got your microphone, baby. We're going to go ahead and lift him up real quick and get the spirit flowing. Those of you that have been watching us for a couple of weeks, turn the mic up on your uh, keyboard. Turn it up. Turn everything up. This keyboard. Turn that down. Turn the mic up. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Hallelujah. Get that. God is good. Amen. Amen. Y'all ready? Yes. Yeah. Might have to kill the mic. Hallelujah. So you can turn the keyboard up. But we ready to get it. See? Yeah, just kill the mic. Hallelujah. God is good. There we go. Hallelujah. Be patient with us, y'all. Be patient. We're going to get it going. Know, if you know God is good. Getting it together. Yeah. Hallelujah. We rebuke you, Satan, in the name of God in heaven. Y'all ready? Come on, get it going, get it going, get it going, get it going. Let's get it going. We got a little difficulties with the uh, we didn't worry about it.
even believe that there is going to be all things added to you. I want you to know that as long as you believe that late in the midnight hour, God will turn it around. It will happen and say everything is in, in you. Whatever you believe, you can do. Whatever you believe will happen. Whatever you believe shall happen. But you got to believe it. I can't believe it for you. Mama can't believe it for you. Daddy can't believe it for you. Grandma can't believe it for you. You got to believe for yourself. You got to put it in yourself. You got to walk this walk yourself. Come on. Don't stop the beat. Keep the beat going. Yes, yes, yes. God is good. I want you to know that. And I want you to know he's out and Omega. Just take the time to just meditate on how good God is being. Take that time out and just... Give him the adoration that he needs, that he deserves. The submission, the, the commission, the, the commitment, I mean. I want you to just think about it. Think about all the things that you could have been died from. Think about all the things that could have taken away all the things that you have, but God allowed it not to happen. I'm telling you, Satan can't move if God don't let him move. If, just like in the Bible, he told me, he, he asked him, he said, hey, have you tried my servant Job? And he said, you can do everything but touch his life. You can't kill him. So look, if God tells Satan no, if God tells him no, that means nothing will happen to you. If you pray and believe and ask God to, to, to answer your prayers, I believe that it's going to happen. As long as you're blessed, you got to have that counseling of God to be blessed now. you got to have that counseling of God to be blessed. Hallelujah. Blessed in the city, blessed in the fields, blessed when we come and when we go. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Yes, God. Take little shorty and pull the chair over there. Pick the chair up. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. I ain't going to be before you long because that turtle praising God too. Y'all hear that? Splash, splash. God is good. Splash. God is good. Splash. Crank out. God is good. Now, nah, how's everybody doing? We just finished doing our our praise and worship, and I'd like to thank everybody for vibing in the One Worship, One Praise Discipleship Center, where we only teach and preach the Bible. And it is now, what like what my dad say, he say, it's preaching time. It is preaching time. And I'm going to go to God in prayer, then I'm going to go into this word. I would like to thank my wife, these beautiful children. First, I would like to thank God, who's first in my life, for this opportunity and just keeping us going. I seen on there on this Facebook where someone put only God keeps you guys doing what you do on a daily basis. Hallelujah. It is only God. And I believe that's my Auntie Rita Jones. Shout out to you. But it is only God. And I would like to thank God for keeping us and pushing us to keep our minds stayed on him. Letting us know that it is only me that is helping me. And once you realize that, then you will, you will keep pushing. You will know that it can't nothing keep me from pressing because God got me. It says a, a, the righteous man's steps are ordered by the Lord. Hello, hey, 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 everybody on there on, on stream land live. I, I, I just want to say hello. And I give a shout out to Rock of Praise Ministry, St. Jude Memorial Worship Center. Let me turn all these phones and gadgets off. They're going to be going off, but I'm preaching. I don't want to hear. But yes, uh, uh, shout out to the ministries that's going forward. Uh, the Unity Worship Center, Pastor Tharp, uh, again, uh, 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 Brian Collins, and First Lady Pastor Collins up at St. Jude, and my my pastor, my dad, uh, Rock of Praise, Bishop Vassie, those of you that know, that's my dad, that's my pastor. And that's the ministry I come from up there. But no, that's neither here nor there. I'm going to go to God in prayer, then I'm going to get into this word. But I just thank God for everybody that's helping our ministry. 
our ministry is steady growing. People are steady viewing and, and steady watching and listening and, and, and I'll be getting all kind of messages on Facebook. Thank you for your, your serve. Thank y'all. If it wasn't for y'all, if it wasn't for the people, if it wasn't for God blessing y'all to push me to keep going. I need people like Rock of Praise Ministry, my dad, you know, Bishop Vassy. I need people like that to, to talk to daily, to keep me going. I need people like my wife and, and everybody that's viewing and, and these babies to keep me going because it's, it's sometimes being a leader, it can be frustrating. It can be frustrating. And it can be challenging if you do not have people that will help you and push you and give you good guidance and direction. But yeah, let me pray. I thank the ministries again. Let me pray. God in heaven, I thank you for just blessing us, giving us this opportunity. I ask you to just continue to guide all the ministries that's going forward. Just this word as it go forward. We love you, God. We praise you. We are blessed because of the counsel you give us. We are blessed because of the guidance that you lead us with. And we thank you for it, God. We thank you for not allowing Satan to take our lives. We thank you for not uh, 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 letting uh, 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 Satan uh, uh, destroy us throughout the week. I ask you, God, to just grab a hold of our lives. Give us the strength. Be our strength. Guide us throughout the time of this day. We need your power. We need you, God. In the name of God, we rebuke you, Satan. Thank you, God. Amen. But yes, um, <coughs> excuse me. Everybody viewing like, he got the COVID. Oh my God. They're going to sanitize their screen. Sanitize it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, excuse me though. But now I'm gonna go ahead and get into this lesson. Again, I was saying thanks to all the ministries and things that help one worship, one praise, discipleship center keep going. And but today is review day. Every end of the month, uh, I like to review all the messages that I've been over throughout that month. I started doing that when I when I uh uh started me and the wife. God gave us some revelations to, to do this ministry. Every last Sunday of the month, we review over everything we've been speaking about, I've been talking about, and my dad been telling me, uh, talking to me about series, and that's what I've been kind of preaching in, if you haven't noticed. But yes, we're today is review week. We're gonna, I'm going to be talking about all the things that we went through, uh, went over throughout the whole month on Sunday as far as the word. But one of my sermons was speaking on counseling. And if you haven't noticed, all of my sermons throughout this month was according to counseling. Every topic that I chose was according to the segment of counseling. Because without the counseling of the Holy Spirit, how will we know what it is? How will we understand how to receive the Holy Spirit? But the first message I gave this month was speaking on good counseling produces knowledge. Good counseling produces knowledge that instructs wisdom and prudence. And the next, the, the, the following Sunday, I spoke on counseling through distractions. Stay with me. Stay with these are the topics, and then I'm going to go through. We're going to go through them, and I'm going to break them down, and then I'm going to go to the last one for this day. But counseling through distractions was the next one. Then the following Sunday was counsel steps or ordered steps. And then I had to be chosen. Wait, one of them wasn't in there. I had one. And then, yeah, that's it. To be chosen. I'm tripping. I was going to give y'all my Thanksgiving topic. That was not the Sunday topic. But yes, the reason that this month was on counseling because of all the things that we are going through in the time of this, of being amongst the earth, if we do not have good information or factual counseling, we will be led astray. If we do not have the counseling that can help us elevate, graduate, and escalate, it will take us into a deep pit. 
and with counseling that is directly from good source and from good education, it leads us to where we can be successful and be under what is that called? Prudence. But if you haven't noticed, everything that I've been speaking on this month has been considering the mental state, the mind. The mind is what guides the body to do the action or take action or make action take place. If our mind has no point to tell us to do things, then we will be as if they say a vegetable. So as we continue to get counseled by something that can instruct us or lead us to prosperity, the mental opens into a broad segment. What are you saying? The brain has a portal where if deep, deep information or there is just basic information. When deep information enters into the mind, when the deep information enters into the mind, it opens a portal to where to you see or perceive differently from the rest. And it stores into a memory bank where you will know that this is different where you will see that the thinking that you're thinking is not according to basic information. Now, with good counseling, it can guide you through life problems. It can guide you and help you structure a business. It can guide your marriage. It can guide you into parenthood. But all of these things have to be stored. You have to open your mind to what has good information. So, in order to receive, in order to precede, in order to collect, you have to be submitted to what you are getting counsel from. Now, submission is another mental thing. Submission takes place once we recognize now, again, I'm speaking on the mental state of counseling. Again, I believe that once you have the mental in line, the body will guide. They say, kill the head and the body will fall. This is how the book of war, this is what happens when you go to war. You kill the head and the body will die too. Take, for example, if you're boxing, and you hit a person that the, the, your opponent hits you in a direct spot to where to your head make your legs move from under you. He hits your head to make the body fall. So everything is according to this portal. Your mental is according to how you see, how you hear, and how you speak. How you see, how you hear, how you speak. That's the mental of everything. That's the intake of the mental of your brain, of your body. But if we do not have the correct counseling and we store in things that we perceive to be things, there's where destruction comes in and take place. Hold on. Let me get a scripture. Let me get a scripture. Let's go to Joshua. Somebody give me my Bible over there. Give me, give me that one. Joshua, the first chapter. This is the, uh, the, the, the passage I came from the last time I, uh, last week to be chosen. And it's going to explain what I'm saying. When, when, when you accept the counseling, everybody, they don't understand uh, why people say, I don't understand why the people won't accept God. I don't understand why they just can't accept 
good knowledge, good structure. It's because their mental has stored into their memory bank all the things that they thought, that they choose to be deep. But when you take the correct, now, now, it's easy said and hard to be done. I was told when I was in prison, you have to unlearn what you learn and learn what's facts. Unlearn what they taught you and learn the factuality of what you're doing. Now, we have a lot, this is where, this is why you got a lot of people coming into the church realm, coming under the realm of God, who are thinking they're under the realm. And they're just coming to church with no study, no action, no ability according to the Holy Spirit. But it's because their mental state, their perception of the Holy Spirit is backwards. But that's what's going on with the rim today. We have a lot of people looking at, I'm going to say it like we used to say it in the streets. You're looking at the game backwards, buddy. You perceive in the game but backwards. Now, when you come at it face first, then you won't get played over. When, well, how do you do this? You submit yourself. This is why I've been talking about counseling. Because everything uh, uh, is according to your mental. N submission, acknowledgement, prayer, everything starts in the brain. It starts in the brain. Now, let's get, let's get to Joshua, the first chapter. Uh, verses, I'm going to start from 6. Let's start from 6. This first chapter, 6 verse. It says, be strong and courageous. Because you will lead these people into, and lead the people to inherit the land I swore to their fathers to give them. Be strong and courageous. Be careful to obey the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right, to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Now, the, 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 the thing that we're dealing with is how do we become prudent? Prudent is to govern thyself, to instruct thyself. In order to become prudent in the spirit, you have to have the knowledge of the spirit. You have to have the counseling of God. You have to be counseled by the spirit. So you have to have the facts first in order to submit. You have to have the facts. First thing is you acknowledge. Acknowledge that the knowledge that God is counseling you with will help you. You have to acknowledge that the counsel that God is counseling you with will help. Now that you acknowledge and you see, you feel, you taste, you smell, you touch, Everything according to the spirit. Now, it is time to submit. Now, submission is where, where some people say it's a hard thing to do. But no, the way you submit to anything is by practice. It's by Receiving, seeking more of what you're submitting to. So you will have the structure on how to carry yourself as a submitted Samaritan. <laughs> but yes, now it says, it says, be careful. It says, be careful, be strong, be careful to obey all the law. All the law. All of the law. Again, this month we've been speaking on counseling. What it takes to get the mental state under submission. Now, it says, be careful to take and do all of the law. Now, if it's, say, plain and simple to do all, and we just do half, how can you say that you're submitted? Your mental still ain't there. 
The guidance is there. God is guiding you. He's giving you the counseling because you acknowledge that the counseling that he's giving you will work. But it's no full effort. You have ways submitting. You have to submit full. And once, once you, you, you start to submit, some of us will see that we are chosen. That we are chosen for a purpose. Excuse me. That we are chosen for a purpose. Now, again, I'm going over all the sermons we did, that have been over throughout this month. I got so much stuff up here. But yes, I'm going through all the sermons that we went through throughout this month. Now, and we've been talking about counseling, and counseling is the mental part of your brain. That's the mental part of your body. Now, again, the, the definition of counseling is the provision of assistance and guidance in resolving personal, social, or psychological problems and difficulties. So it's the provision and assistance. Now, check this out. Now, you're getting counseling. Now, it's time to know that this is the knowledge that is facts. Now, knowledge is facts and information. Facts and information. That's what God is giving you through the counseling. So you can become prudent. So your walks can your walk can be ordered. So you won't have to worry about the things that this world worry about. So when you step outside your door, your light will shine. So when people see you, they will see God in you. They won't have you won't have to speak. They will see from your walk. But we have to begin counseling. Have to begin counseling. Now let now let's go to First Peter the fourth chapter. Come on, First Peter the fourth chapter. We speaking on this counseling thing and again. This is review day. We done went. I done went through all of this these the, the, these books of the Bible throughout this month speaking on mental health and counseling because that's what this is. That's what the Bible is there to help you with mental health. But people don't understand. We go to psychiatrists and therapists and, and, and lawyers and judges and all of these people. But this will help you. This is really therapy. Now, go to 1 Peter, the 4th chapter and the 12th verse. And it says, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial, the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you. Hold on. It says, do not be surprised. Do not be surprised when bills come in and they're overdue. Do not be surprised when your significant or your spouse and you keep arguing. Do not be surprised when your son or daughter is going against your teaching. It says, don't be surprised. These are things that will happen. Don't be surprised when the body gets sick. Don't be surprised when you change and you start to walk in the way I want you to walk. And you leave people according to how you walk. Don't be surprised when mom or daddy can't be there like God is going to be there. Don't be surprised when your siblings are not around. When times get rough. He said, don't be surprised. Because these things is going to happen. But it also says, as long as you, in, in, in Joshua, the first chapter, in the eighth verse, it says, do not let this book of law depart from your mouth. Meditate in the day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. And, but first Peter was saying, don't be surprised because if you're meditating day and night like Joshua in the first chapter says, you won't have time to even acknowledge these situations. You won't even really be spending time thinking of things that is not according to the Holy Spirit. Because you have the counseling. Your focus on being prosperous. Your focus is on becoming successful. Your focus is 
becoming, having your name become great. That's your focus. That's your focus. Remember, God is here to assist you. He's the provision that's assisting you to help you while you walk. But we got to get it into our brain. It's an everyday thing. It's an everyday constant thing. Not just one hour of the day. Not just one day of the week. Not just when you wake up before you go to sleep pray. Not just when you hear the preacher preach. That's the only time you're getting word. This is a constant thing that you have to be militant at and train thyself. Even when the ones that are around you or not on what you're on. Continue to train yourself to continue walking. It's a constant thing. But you have to understand that can't no preacher preach you into heaven. Can't no preacher pray you into heaven. No deacon, no first lady, no usher. None of these bishops, me, none of that. We can't get you into heaven. It's all according to how you believe, what your faith is, how you walk, how you pursue what God wants you to be on. Again, now let's go to 2 Timothy 2.15. Now, 1 Peter, it was saying that don't be surprised because if you start to get surprised, that'll distract you. It'll distract you from where I'm trying to get you. It'll make you feel like this is not worth it. It'll make you seem like nothing is happening good for you. If you be surprised, if this trial distracts you, it'll make you feel unnormal and unusual. That's why he said don't be surprised. But check this. And again, remember Joshua 1, 1 and 8 says, it's a, as long as you keep focused, basically is what it's saying in my perception, as long as you keep focused, as long as you push strive and keep your drive and make sure God is leading you and counseling you, you will be successful. First Peter was saying, don't be surprised when them trials come too. Because as you go up, people watching you and that spirit that's in some of these people ain't holy. There's going to be haters. There's going to be people that don't understand why you're doing you're what you're doing. Why is she doing that? Why is he doing that? Oh, he think he better than the rest. Mm -hmm. But don't be surprised because that would distract you. Don't let nothing distract you from where God wants you to be. But it takes a mind that is militant. It takes a mind that will stay focused. It takes the counseling and it takes the assistance of the Holy Spirit to keep us going. Now let's get to 2 Timothy 2.15. It says, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. It said, do your best. It didn't say do what Jesse say is your best. It didn't say do what First Lady Queen Bassey said. Is your best. It didn't say what Princess LaKayla's best is. Is my best. No. Your best ain't the other person's best unless y'all are on the same level. And most times, nine times out of ten, nobody is on the same level because we don't receive, precede, or attend how the next one do. Now, you can portray to be like the next person. You can want to be but there's never going to be. Similarity is, is not the same as being. Similarities. That's what messes us up. Oh, man, that sound like my testimony. That sound like what we went through. Yeah, but that ain't true. Your race is your race. People can help you on your race, but they don't know how your race is supposed to be rated. Your race may be at a fast pace. And theirs is at a slow. But it say do your best. According to how you believe. Not according to how your pastor. Deacon so and so. Mother so and so. 
Yeah, she told me, uh, as long as I believe like her, I'm going to be good. Or as long as I believe like him, I'm going to be. No, believe how God want you to believe. Check this. When you went, when, when Jesus was making disciples, this is my perception. When Jesus was making disciples, he didn't say, I want you to be Jesus. Did he? He, he, he didn't turn them into him, did he? No. If he did, Judas wouldn't have been Judas. If he turned his disciples into him, Judas wouldn't have been Judas. And Peter wouldn't have been Peter. Paul wouldn't have been Paul. You know what I'm saying? Jesus was just showing him. He said, you can walk it. And I just heard my wife read something earlier. It said, do all and everything you do to praise God. How you do. Not according to me. I don't know your relationship. I don't know how God came to you. I don't know what it is that he wants you to do. I can't say, you know, God will reveal some things to, to some people to help you on your walk. But again, re remember, it's a mental thing. You got to have it made up. And the song say, I got my mind made up. You got to have your mind made up and ready. It says put on a full armor of God so you can be ready. That means the head, the chest, the legs, the shoes, the hands, everything has to be protected. That's why it's the armor. It even covers up the eyes. Because these things of this world will keep us, will distract us. And when I say things, ain't humanity of this world? Ain't this where humanity is birthed? It would distract you if you let it. That's why I was speaking on count. I'm a heavy person when it comes to this mental state because I believe a lot of people say, say things and don't mean it. You got to really mean, when you mean something, that means you stand on it. You stand on it. And you stand firm no matter what the trial is. And like I said in 1 Peter, don't be surprised because you stand standing strong. Don't be surprised that it did when something come and try to knock you down. That's just like, check this out. When you go into the uh, the penitentiary system and you go in there, you standing strong, you a strong young man, you standing by yourself and you can hold your own and you stand in your grounds. Them be the ones, the ones they try. All because you believe you can stand. That's what the, the spirit things is about. It ain't them that's testing you. It's the spirit that's in them. That's a, 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 when you stand strong and firm by yourself and believe and stand on what you believe in, that's according to the spirit. And Satan knows that. He said, hold on. That person is doing something that is biblical. I don't want nobody to do anything that's biblical. I want them to think that they need the next person. No, you don't need the next person. We need the Holy Spirit. Yes, unity and worship is great, but if you're not according to how I'm moving, I can't let you distract me. We got to go. <laughs> All of us got to go. We got to leave earth. Y'all got to think about this. Where do you want to go, heaven or hell? <laughs> you got you to gotta speak it. And there are all these people, they scared to speak on hell. Hell is real, just as well as heaven is real. And I want y'all to know that if you do not get yourself together, guess where everybody's going to be? Even me, if I don't put it together how God want me to pull it together. I'm no different from y'all. We all can walk this walk. We all can do what God wants us to do. Ain't nobody better than the next he made us all in his image. Think of that. It don't matter the color, race, or ethnic, or background, or culture. He made us all in his image. All of us have the availability to receive the power of the Holy Spirit. All we have to do is get our minds together and receive the counseling so we can submit. Once you start to submit, you got to walk it out. You just can't talk about it. You got to be about it. And shut up. Now, 2 Timothy 2 15 it says, do your best to present yourself as to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the to the word to word of truth. 
That's how we're supposed to be. We supposed to, we when we standing and we going and we doing our mission, we can't be ashamed of what we doing if it's for God. Only way you, you some most of these people be ashamed is because they're going out of the, the rim of God. They're going out of the rim. So they get ashamed of their actions. People get to talking about them and all these things that because their uh their name ain't good no more. But once you walk under the counsel and receive the counseling of God, it's amazing. Now, check this. Go to Proverbs 5 and 1. Because God is leading you in the direction that you need to be in. But you got to recognize, you got to acknowledge, submit, and take action. Proverbs 5 and 1, it says, my son, be attentive to my wisdom. Attentive means paying close attention to something. Attentive means to pay a close attention. And he said, pay a close attention. Pay close attention to my wisdom. Let me give you the definition of wisdom. The definition of wisdom, the soundness of an action or decision with regard to the application of experience. Knowledge and good judgment. He said in Proverbs the fifth chapter, he said, My son, be attentive to my knowledge. Be attentive to what I teach. He said, Pay close attention. I want you to pay real close attention because if you don't, if you do not pay close attention to what I'm, this is what, God, what he said. If you do not pay close attention to what I'm telling you, and you, because when you pay close, that means I got your. Un when, when I was in school, they used to say, "I want your undivided attention. I don't want you to divide my attention with something else." That's all God is saying. He said, "I don't want you to be dividing. You must, when you pay attention to something, you focus on it." He said, "I don't want you to divide my attention with the world, because the world is Satan." And with me. Either you're with me or you're against me. He said in Proverbs, the fifth chapter, in the first verse, he said, My son, be attentive to my wisdom. Incline your ear to understand it. Again, attentive means to pay a close attention to something. Remember, remember, remember that. And wisdom is the soundness of an action or decision. Regarding to knowledge, we got to realize that once we really, really get under this word and get under the rim, things will be easy. It will be easy to walk. Because, you're, again, it says once you're under the rim, you're focused. You're meditating day and night. They said, no, it ain't going to be easy. It's as easy as, as you see it. Don't see it as nobody else. If they say it ain't easy, let them say it ain't easy. Let them say how hard it is. People be like, oh, that's just how life No, that's how your life is. That ain't how mine is. And you got to be bold when you in this. Be bold. Stand strong. And, and, and where it say in Joshua, the first chapter, in the sixth verse, it says, be strong and courageous. Be strong. Let them know that, hey, look, look, that ain't how I'm going. This ain't what I'm with. And I done made my mind up. I ain't with that spit. Nah. <laughs> but no, nah, that's real. This month we've been speaking on counseling, mental health, for the month of November. That's what we've been speaking on. Oh, I'm going over all the sermons I spoke on throughout this month. And we've been speaking on counseling, mental health. And I love speaking on counseling because that's what it takes. If you get your mental together, you can make it Anywhere. Anywhere. It's sad that I had to go to prison and learn that. That you are as free as your mind let you be. You are as smart as your mind let you be. You are as intelligent as your mind let you be. You have to push yourself. I was just telling my wife last night. I said, you know what? Even when I'm sleepy, I push myself. I be trying to, I be up, sleepy, eyes going like this. Pushing myself, though. If I got something to do, in the name of God, God knows I'm going to push myself. You got to have a push in thyself. You got to have uh, 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 the guidance, the insurance of God. 
Because if you don't, you're going to be instructed the wrong way. Let's go to Proverbs, the fourth chapter. Fourth chapter in the 25th verse. Again, I said I'm speaking on mental health. Everybody, look, everybody don't want to really face reality. This is how you submit to God. This is how you get saved. They say, oh, no, you come up and say, oh, Jesus is this, Jesus is that. Oh, no. This is how you become counseled by the Holy Spirit. The mind. Once you get your mental together, Everything is going to fall in place. Everything. Everything. Now, check Proverbs, the fourth chapter, in the 25th verse. We'll see what that dog is for. The 25th verse. Let your eyes look directly forward, and your gaze be straight before you. Now, let's look, look, check this out. Gaze. The definition of gaze. To look steadily and intently, especially in admiration, surprise, or thought. So let your gaze be straight before you. You got to be looking forward. Forward is where we want to look. But again, it takes stuff on the inside. We can look like, that's what's wrong with people. People think just because you're dressed up, you're a Christian. Oh, man, he got on a nice suit. He must be in church. Oh, nah, that ain't what it is. Well, I'm, uh, one worship, one praise discipleship center, it takes the intellect to be saved. I don't care how you dressed. I don't care what you smell like. I don't care how big you are, how small you are. It takes the intellect. So it don't matter what you wear, what kind of dress code or whatever they're doing at your services, if you don't have this in you, how can you be saved? They say if you confess with thy mouth, but confession, it means to acknowledge first Acknowledgement mean that I understand. So once you start to confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that means that you understand. You can't confess with no understanding. Or you can't confess not having your mental ready to receive what God has for you. So we can sit up here and say chants and, and believes and these, that, and the other, but if it's not in you, you're not saved. It has to be in you. I don't care what no pastor say, no preacher, no deacon. If he don't have it in him, he ain't saved. She don't have it in him, she ain't saved. So remember that. You got to make sure your mind, the focus, is in the right area. You got to make sure your walk is walking in the right direction. You got to understand what God is doing. The definition of understanding, having insight or good judgment. We got to have insight. Got to have an understanding of it. If you do not, how can you be saying, how can you say that you are saved but don't understand what it takes to be saved? And then say you saved and then don't do what it takes to be saved. How can you? How can you? I'll wait. But that's what's going on. We got a lot of people just want to fill their churches up. Got a lot of people that want to look good. They want to take them suits and make it look like a Christian. Just because you got on a suit, that don't mean you're a Christian. That don't mean you saved. It don't matter what religion you is. If it's not in you, you're not a part of it. Hallelujah. It got to go in you. Check this out. I was going to court for my little brother, and my little brother's of another religion. That ain't even here nor there. But the whole point of what I'm saying is, he went to court in a suit. Looked like a, a straight preacher. That's what they were saying. The boy looked like a preacher. 
what I'm trying to say is, it's not on you, it's in you. We got to get this together. You want your babies to last long? You want them to, you, you wonder what, now, now this is real. If you wonder why so much violence in America, it's because of the mental. If you wonder why it's so many people starving in America, it's because of the mental. If you wonder why there is so much negativity going on in America, it's because of the mental. If you do not have God in your mental state, you're going to react as a sinful person. That's why everything is this, this, the brain, the brain, the brain, the brain. Counseling is important. All right, now let's go to Psalms 1, and I'm going to close it out. I'm going to show you why counseling is important. Again, this, this month of November was the month of speaking of mental health and counseling. This month was the month of speaking of mental health and counseling. And I ran over all the messages and sermons that I preached for this month. And, the, and we were speaking on counseling, knowledge, mental health, to be chosen, and giving thanks. But I'm going to show you why counseling is important, and this is coming straight from the Bible. Psalms 1. It says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. Let's go back. It said, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. So in order to be blessed, you have to be under the counseling of God. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Now you see what I'm saying? The counseling is where it takes place. If we were seeing the factuality of the spirituality, that's what's important. All you got to do is apply it. It's available there. It's available there. But I ain't going to keep y'all long. I'm going to go ahead and pray us out. But I was speaking on all the sermons that I went over this month. This month was counseling and mental health. You know, and I believe that's where it starts. Before you can receive God, you got to be counseled. You got, you got, you got to understand. Just because you come up in the suit, and you say, uh, uh, you confess that Jesus is Lord, and you still walk around here submitting to these devils. Yeah, it's more than just that. We gotta start preaching that and teaching that that it's more than just confessing that Jesus is Lord. And you, when you do confess, we gotta understand the meaning of confession. Confession. We got another understand the meaning of that. But God in heaven, we thank you. We come to you asking you to forgive us. Watch over us throughout the time of this day. Thank you for this beautiful lesson. Touch the viewers that watch. I ask you to touch everybody across the world. I ask you to just bless us to receive your word as it was given. We rebuke you, Satan, in the name of God in heaven. Thank you, God. Whatever is your will, let it be done. Amen. Hey, and also we have a, a, a Christmas thing going on where you can donate three dollars to help. The community, we're having a, a little giveaway to the community, and our cash app is up there if you would love to donate. And also, we have scarves, gloves, and hats for and coats for children. If you have children that are in need for the brand new coats, brand new scarves, gloves, hats, if you guys need them, inbox us. Don't be ashamed. Again, here at One Worship, One Praise Discipleship Center, we do not tell the community who we help. That's not about what we don't. Go to the government and try to take your name and register it either to get funds or not. None of that. We don't do that here. We just help and let it be done where it's at. But yeah, again, I would like to see our Wednesday Rising. Wednesday Rising, 9 a.m. We have our Bible edification class. And I would love to see all of you guys. I would love for some people to get some word. Again, remember, it starts with the mental state of the mind. And we were speaking on counseling and mental health this week. I mean, this month. Next month, I'm gonna we gonna we gonna try to get a little deeper. But yes, uh, again, if you would like to donate, the cash app is up there. And if you are a person that's in need for your children, scarves, gloves, hats, coats, 
Again, they are brand new. And if you live out of state, we will do our best to get them to you. Send us your address and we'll ship them out to you. But we love y'all. Thank y'all. Y'all have a blessed beginning of the week, day, soon day. In the name of God, we love y'all. Y'all have a blessed one because one worship, one praise is out of here.